Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing some of the games we got for Easter and for Christmas. So if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to give you different curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button and let's get into this video. Okay, so we got several new games for Christmas and for Easter. Like here's part of a pile and there's more over here. <laughs> And so I just thought it'd be fun to kind of review them for you and just give you my thoughts about this, these games. So if you had seen those videos and were interested in getting them, maybe this will be helpful to you and help you decide if you want them or not, if they're worth the money. And so we're just going to kind of jump right in. I have a variety of games. We're not going to go in any specific order. I'm just going to grab and explain to you and that's how it's going to go. And some of these games I have played a fair amount with my kids and several of them my kids have played a lot by themselves or my husband has played them with my kids and so I wasn't as familiar with them yesterday me and my kids sat down with a whole bunch of these games we kind of went through them some of them they're like this is how you're supposed to play mom I'm like I'm sorry I hadn't played with you and so they kind of showed me how to play just so I'd know what their favorite parts were and parts were did that make sense yeah <laughs> and all those things. And so that's kind of what I'm going to share with you today is a combination of my thoughts and some of the things they said, and also a few insights from my husband on some of the games he's just played with them. Okay, so we're going to start with Catan Jr., which I just mentioned this in a favorites video because this has probably been one of our favorite games. We got this one for Easter and have really, really loved it. I played the original version as a teenager and thought it was super fun and really can't wait for my kids to play it but I figured it would be too hard for most of my kids. My oldest might be okay with it right now. So I got this one and it has been so, so fun. My husband is an economist, so he really loves this game as well because it's teaching, you know, about trade and different things. I don't know all the things it's teaching about economics, but, but he loves it as well. I feel like it was a super quick game for my kids to learn how to play. I thought it was going to be a lot harder for them to figure it all out, but no, they just, they just figured it out and it was really easy. My four-year-old usually plays with my husband or she plays with me if, with, you know, just whatever adult is playing with the rest of the kids. She usually helps them out a little bit because she can't really play by herself right now, even though she'd like, she likes to think she can. Like she would try <laughs> for sure, but she can't. So this game's a lot of fun and I enjoy that it is teaching about some like trade and just kind of how commerce, that kind of stuff works in the world. But it also is teaching a lot of strategy and you have to kind of pay attention to what's going on. So I haven't played the original game in a really long time, but I do remember that you would pick where you put your people at the very beginning you know, or your house. I don't know what they were. <laughs> were they houses? I don't know. Anyways, you'd pick where you put them. This one, it's all like color coordinated. So it is according to whatever, ever, ugh, whatever color you pick, that's where you put it on the board. And so that's where you're going to start. And then you can kind of decide where to build from there and what you want to get. And then I just was going to show you these cards a little bit closer. So these are a card that everyone gets and it has all the different uh, products on it, I guess. So you have the sword. It's a it's not a saber. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, they have molasses, they have a goat, they have wood and there's gold. So this tells you the combinations you need to get either like a little house or a fort and a boat, or they have these little cards that have a variety of like prizes or different things on them. Like you could get maybe two more molasses or something than you normally would. And so this helps my kids a lot because then they can look at it, they can decide what they're doing and they all kind of have their different strategies. And it actually kind of is according to how old they are, just because that's their understanding of the game. But even my six year old has won the game. And so his strategy works. But I just think, I think it's so, so fun. And I don't remember what the age, it says age is six plus. And so my six year old can play this pretty easily. Again, he doesn't completely understand the whole strategy of it but it still works really well for him and he's been able to participate with everybody else. Okay, the next game in my pile is Dog Crimes. And this was actually a recommendation from Rooted and Rest, I think when I was trying to find games to get them for Christmas. 
that was, this was one of the ones her kids really liked. I think there's cat crimes as well. I don't remember for sure, but this is a really fun game. There's some really good pros to it. And then one con that I will mention. And I got this for my oldest and it's kind of, it's those puzzle games where it's, I don't know if you ever did those in elementary where <laughs> they give you the card and it's like, this person was sitting next to this person, but they weren't sitting next to this person. And it gives you all these clues and you have to eliminate and figure out all the answers. It's kind of, that's kind of how this works. And then it has a little board that you can visualize and kind of move the pieces around. And you're trying to figure out the answer to the puzzle. And it's a lot of fun. My oldest really, really enjoyed it. All my other kids will sit there and do it as well, even though some of them don't, they don't understand it as well as everybody else, but they still enjoy doing it. So the one thing that I feel like is a little bit hard with this game is once you go through all the clue cards, they're, you just can't play it again. You can, but if you have a child that remembers things really well, like my nine-year-old does, it'll only take a few clues for them to remember what the answer is. <laughs> and so it, that's, it's like once you play it once, the novelty's gone and the suspense, I guess, I don't know. Like you already know the answer. And so it's not as fun to play it again. But if you have more than one child, obviously your other kids can play it. And I feel like some of my younger kids don't remember all the clues as well. So they can play multiple times without remembering the answer. But that's just, that's one of the things with this game. It's kind of a one and done kind of a game once you get through all of the situations. Okay, the next game is Hi-Ho Cherio. And this is just a fun, like simple game. My kids were playing it yesterday and they know how to play this game so well. They know the instructions so well. There's a like individual type play and there's a co cooperative play, I think is what they called it where it's you against the bird puzzle. There's a bird puzzle in here. And if you spin the little spinner thing and it gets to the bird, you flip over a piece of puzzle. And if the puzzle gets finished before everyone's cherries are gone, then the bird wins. But if you finish before, you know, everyone, so like three or four people, if they all finish before the bird puzzle is done, then they all win. And so yesterday my kids all won. They all won the bird puzzle. I don't know how many times the bird wins, but anyways, it's really fun. So there's like two options to play. It's very simple. My four-year-old understands it super, super well. So it's really great for even young kids and they all play it together. This is a nice game that they can pull out. They don't really need much of my help and they can just play it together. So this is one that I would recommend. I think it's really, really great and just a very simple, fun game. Okay, the next thing I wanted to mention is Veggie Farm, and this is a sorting set. This was, again, another recommendation from Rooted and Rest, and it's for ages three plus, and it's really fun. There's so many different activities for it. So I got this for my four-year-old. She was three at the time, so. Anyways, I'm gonna scoot this way. This is a smidge. Anyway, she really enjoys playing this game, and like I said, there's so many options for it. So on the board, you can sort them according to color. You know, it's a whole bunch of vegetables or you can sort them into their appropriate rows. Like some of these have little designs on them for like where the corn is supposed to go. But then they also have little number cards like this so they could sort a certain amount into the little bins. You could have them practice some very like simple addition type stuff. There is just so many things, like the instructions give so many different options for how to play with this. And so some of them she can do all by herself, which is good <laughs> when you have a little preschooler and you need something for them to do while you're homeschooling the rest of your children. But then some of them, uh, she needs help. So I can help her or even some of my older kids can give her different options. Like, what would you do with this? Or what's this number? You know, and they can figure it out, help, help her figure it out. <laughs> not always so helpful, but anyway. And so it's really just a great game. It's just a great thing to, to just give her if she needs something to do. So I've really enjoyed this game and think it was worth it. Okay, the next game is Boggle Junior. And this one I'm a little bit on the fence on. I know most of these I love a lot. Most of these games, there's not one that I wouldn't really, that I would say, oh, send it back. Just because I do a heck of a lot of research before I buy all of these but there's some of them that I'm like 
is would I recommend it? And I don't know about this one. I feel like you could get this from a lot of other things. And let me just tell you, so it gives you the words here. And so this is probably for, it's for like pre-readers or early readers, you know, or a struggling reader, I guess. But you're gonna practice how to spell, but also to read. So it'll give you the cards, it has uh, the name on it. And then the device allows you to either show the name or you can cover it up. So they have to spell it all by themselves. They look at the picture, they're like, that's a frog. How do you spell frog? And they use all these little dice, which my kids just like to roll them until they get the right letter. <laughs> anyway, and so my four-year-old has it uncovered and she just follows the letters. And so it's good like letter recognition and stuff like that. My six-year-old, we cover it up and he just goes, you know, and tries to spell the word by himself. And so then he's learning how to spell. So we haven't really played this game much. It's not one my kids reach for very often. And so that's one of the reasons I feel like I wouldn't recommend it. But at the same time, I feel like it could be a really good homeschooling resource if you incorporated it into your reading and like spelling curriculum for your young kids. And so maybe once a week or something, you could write it down on your planner so you remember, because otherwise I'd forget to incorporate it somehow. So when they do their reading time, they could play this game and pull it out and it would just be something different and be fun. So I feel like if you used it in that way, then it would be worth it. I just have not been good about using it in a homeschool setting. Most of the games we play more on Fridays and we just pull them all out. And this isn't really a game you just pull it out and play. I feel like it works really well if you incorporate it into your daily curriculum. Not so much just like, oh, let's play Boggle Junior. It's just not very fun that way. <laughs> so, but it would be a fun way to change up some reading and spelling in your kid's curriculum. Okay, the next thing I wanna show is a puzzle, which is kinda loud. I'm gonna shake it up. <laughs> and I really like this puzzle. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> but this is a United States one. And it is very, very colorful, which I love. So this is 500, no, this is a thousand pieces. So my oldest has been loving doing puzzles. I love doing puzzles. And my other, my two middle kids wanted to do the puzzles as well. But a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> I don't know if I can talk today, <laughs> but my middle kids have wanted to do the puzzles. But a lot of the ones that we are doing are just so hard for them. They just, they are more scenery type pictures. And so there's not a lot of distinct colors and it's frustrating for them. So they don't really try them. But my eight year old, she just turned eight. She actually worked on this puzzle and did a really good job with it because it's so colorful. It's so, so colorful. It's very easy to figure out where all the pieces go, even though it's a thousand pieces. And I think the back is color coded. Oh no, it has letters. So on the back of each piece, it has a letter of like what area of the puzzle it goes into. So if you wanted to, you could find all the pieces that go in A and then B and then C, and they could put it together that way. I don't have them do that. I'm like, it's colorful enough. You can just figure it out from the front, but that is an option. And then there's even a challenge on the back. <laughs> I just noticed this here, so we should practice our states and capitals. But it says, can you name all the states and their capitals? So you could turn it into a really fun game as well for geography. Sorry, this is so loud moving around. But I really like this puzzle. I feel like they might have some other ones, but I can't remember. Anyway, so I would recommend this if you have people that, people, little people, <laughs> that want to do puzzles, but some of the ones you're doing are a little bit harder or advanced for them. I think this is really, this is a really, great option. Okay, the next game I wanted to show you is Slam Ships. And my kids enjoy this game. This is another one. I feel like these reading spelling games, we don't play as much when we do like game schooling. They're more of something I feel like would be better incorporated into a everyday homeschool scene, which we don't do so well at. <laughs> but that, but I feel like it would. There's another game that's similar to this we have. I was gonna grab it, but I'm not grabbing it now. It's a fly swatting one. So you use a fly swatter to hit the words. This one my kids actually like better because <laughs> these little spaceships right here, 
they're little suction cups on the bottom and they just think it's super fun because you just put it on the floor and then you can push it down and they think that's really cool. Sometimes they end up fighting. <laughs> so the hardest thing I think with this game when you're playing as a game in a homeschool situation is you have a variety of level of readers and so if you make the words too hard, your younger readers can't even read them. If you make them too easy, your older readers just take all the words before anybody else can get them. And so maybe if you did this as a, like again, a once a week type of thing for reading, and you could even set a timer. There's other, they have options for playing, I think with two players or just, or maybe more, cause there's four ships. So you could play with four people. <laughs> Or you could do it by themselves and just set a timer for like 10 seconds. You could set it for a minute and you can, you are the one reading off all the words and see how many words they can get in that amount of time. So it has a variety of words. These are double sided in each color. So this one's red, orange, each color represents a different kind of reading level. And it says it on here. So you have pre-primer, primer, first grade, second grade, and third grade. So there's a lot of options. I love games that can be applied over several years because then it makes it even more worth the money. It's not just, oh, we can only use this for a short amount of time. So this is another game like Boggle. I feel like I could better utilize it during our school week and not just like on our game schooling days. Okay, we just have a few more games to go through. So this one is Chocolate Fix. And I love all the think fun games. That's where this is from. They're really great, uh, like kind of STEM activities or even strategy puzzle type games that are usually like a one player game. So if my kids just need something to do, I'm like, go get one of these games and play them. So it comes with all these pieces in here. So it has a little board and then there's all these like little chocolates right here pink chocolate. I don't know. That doesn't sound very good to me. Neither does white. I just, just chocolate. Chocolates are good. <laughs> and then it also comes with these little pieces. There's a bunch of them. They're kind of hard to hold up, but there you go. Some of them have shapes on them. Some of them are just colors and they help you mark this board right here. So this is another puzzle type game. It kind of reminds me of Sudoku, but very simplified. <laughs> I'm not gonna Sudoku, my husband loves puzzle type things. So in here, it's gonna give you, this is an advanced one, but it's gonna give you a whole bunch of things that need to be true for you to get the puzzle right. So it shows you on this board, like in this corner, it's gonna be something yellow. And then in the middle, or no, maybe just in a spot, I think they just have to be in a spot, <laughs> not in the middle. Um, there's gonna be a chocolate square, and a triangle next to each other. So you gotta make sure that that's true when you figure it all out. And then obviously there's the answers on the back here, if you don't know, <laughs> if you get a little confused. But it starts very simple and then obviously gets a lot harder. And so you could use this for younger kids that maybe don't understand the puzzles as well. But then also my nine-year-old, he was doing the beginning ones yesterday and they were so easy. He's like, this is so easy. I'm like, well, why are you doing the easy puzzles? Pick a harder one. And so he finally did some of the advanced ones and it took him longer, but he still figured it out. So I just think it's really fun and it's so good for your brain, you know, to have to work through these puzzles, to have to think through how things work. So this is a really fun one as well. My youngest will just pull it out and just play with the pieces, you know, so some of them pull them out and don't really know what to do. And then my older ones understand it a little bit better, but I just think all the think fun games are really, really great options, especially for like an individual game that kids can play. Okay, so the next game is Mental Blocks. And this is another game I feel like we haven't fully utilized to its potential. My kids pull out all the time, but they don't usually, like yesterday was the first time we actually played the game that it recommends. My kids just pull it out and build stuff with it because you have all of these pieces in here. And I pulled a couple out. And so you can just build a whole bunch of fun things and try to stack them on top of each other. And so that's what my kids like to do. Even my four-year-old, this is one of her favorite things to pull out and just try to build all the things with it. But if you wanna play the game, <laughs> then that's also a lot of fun and it helps your brain work better. <laughs> it helps you uh, practice memory type skills because here's a card 
So it has a pitcher on it. So the games, you would split all the pieces in half. There's two of everything in here. And so you'd split them in half. And so you have two teams and, which is kind of hard with our kids, but you know, I, I can be a helper on a team because we just have such a young, we have a four year old that, you know, she's not necessarily always helpful to the team. So <laughs> then I have to be on a team anyways. And so you put this like somewhere behind you, like up here where no one can see it, but then each person takes a turn. They go look at it for 10 seconds. They come back, build what they remember. And then the next person can go up and look at it again and come back until they get it figured out and try to make this puzzle. And some of these are super simple, like this is number 40. So obviously this is gonna be a lot harder. Some of the beginning ones are very, very simple and easy to do and easy to remember. But this just helps you pay attention to different details and things like that on, on a card, right? And then be better at paying attention to details in the world around you. Another option that they give for play is to have someone tell you the card. So one person has the card and they try to describe it to you, which again is a really good skill to have. So I feel like this builds a lot of really good skills. Again, we just haven't utilized them super well. So we need to play this more. My kids thought it was super fun. They didn't even know that's how you're supposed to play. Again, they just always pull it out and either try to build what's on the card or they just build whatever they want. <laughs> just have fun with that. So this is a really fun game. I would recommend it. We just need to be better about using it. Okay, the last game I wanted to tell you about is Buy It Right, and this one is abnormally long, so I'm like scooting clear over so you can see it. This game is a really good game to teach some math skills, to learn how to count money, which even if in the future we're not using as much cash, I don't even use that much cash right now, it's still important because there's a lot of skip counting and stuff involved in counting money. And I think it's still a very important skill to have, even if we're not using it very much nowadays. So this game helps you with that. And it has a calculator in it. You know, it's not a very nice calculator, but that's like my kid's favorite part. They fight over the calculator all the time and that's, they love it. They just love the calculator. So you go in and it's like you're going grocery shopping. So again, teaching some life skills here about going to the store. And then you either get to buy like one item, two items or three, and you're gonna roll the dice and that's gonna help you figure out how much it's gonna cost. And then you, if you are buying more than one thing, you use the calculator to add it up. <laughs> and then you pay the amount, you know, for all your groceries at the store. And it's really fun. I love the whole idea. The only thing that is a little bit of a struggle is the game is just a little bit slow, I feel like. Let me scoot back over here. And so I think the hardest part about it is while my kids are using the calculator to add up all their prices and stuff, I have a hair somewhere over here, that the other kids don't have anything to do. So if they only are buying one thing, you don't use a calculator and it doesn't take very long to move to the next person's turn. But if you are using the calculator to you know put in two or three, or no, I don't think there's four, but two or three numbers, it takes a lot longer and most of the time my kids are pretty good, but occasionally it's like they, they're they getting a little bored. So it's just a slightly slower moving game. And sometimes they're interested in watching the other person put the numbers in the calculator and sometimes they're not. So I feel like that's the hardest part of the game, but it teaches a lot of really good skills. So I'd still recommend it. And there's ways to adapt it to, to so it says ages five to nine on the box or nine plus but there's ways to adapt it for younger kids and older kids. And so again, I love games that are adaptable and that I don't just have to play with them now because <laughs> this is the only age range that will work. We can play the game for years to come. Okay, so that was my review of the games we got for Easter and Christmas. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful for you. And if you have any game recommendations for us, please put them down below. I'm always looking for more game, game options, especially when it comes to Christmas and Easter. I love buying my kids games <laughs> around that time of year. So please put your recommendations below of games that you really love. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time.